Hey guys, welcome back to Live Life Simple. Today we're gonna to take a little break from cooking, but we still are gonna be in the kitchen today. Uh, we're gonna to add to our maintenance library uh, video catalog, because today I wanna to take apart this Premier pump and just uh, show you the internals if you ever have problems or you need to clean the insides. And just so we have a reference for the future or in case you need to do this in the future, here we go. <laughs> So to clean out the inside of a vacuum pump, you're gonna need the vacuum pump, obviously. You're gonna need uh, your oil filter. You might as well drain the oil that's in there into a filter. If you're, not gonna, if you're gonna discard the oil, you know, just some kind of container that you can drain that oil into. I would also recommend some type of soft face mallet like this, or uh, just like your uh, rubber type mallet like this. Something that's not going to mar uh, the vacuum pump, but it is helpful for getting that cover or the case on the front off. And we'll go over that uh, a little bit later in the video. You're also gonna need uh, some fresh oil to put into, filtered or brand new. Uh, a funnel would be helpful. And then to get that case off, you're gonna need a four millimeter Allen wrench. If the inside of your pump is really gummed up, you're gonna want some kind of soft tooth bristled brush, such as an old toothbrush or something like that that can kind of get in those cracks and crevices. And then another thing you might need is some type of cleaner, like a carb cleaner or a brake cleaner, something that's gonna evaporate like these, but definitely something that's capable of breaking up all that gunk and goo on the inside of this pump. So the first thing we wanna do is get rid of any oil that is inside of this pump. And if you don't have a Premier pump, most all of them are, are pretty similar. They're gonna have some kind of drain plug. This pump that I'm using today is actually my backup pump and it is brand new. And I, I actually need to drain the oil out of it anyway because it, it just sits and I don't wanna keep oil in it. Once you're done draining the oil, I like to tip this forward uh, just to get all of the remaining oil out of here because if you don't get all of the extra oil that's in here or get you know every last drop if you can uh, it's gonna end up on your floor or whatever when you pull this front cover off. Now before we go any further, I wanna bring up a couple things. The first being, if you don't have a reason to do this, I would not recommend doing this. These Premier pumps are so much better at keeping the internals and everything uh, clean as opposed to the older pumps that Harvest Right and other freeze dryers have had in the past. If the pump's not acting up, there's not visible chunks and stuff in the oil when you change the oil, I would not recommend doing this. The the second thing I wanna bring up is that I do not work for the manufacturer. I do not work for these companies. I'm not a tech. This is the way I do it. So if you have doubts or your pump is still under warranty, please consult the manufacturer. Please consult uh, Harvest Right themselves or whoever makes your pump and make sure that this is the proper way to do this for your pump. Because at the end of the day, I'm just a guy on YouTube. All right, before we get to the next part, I wanna mention a couple of things. This is a messy job, no matter how you look at it. I would probably recommend doing this inside of a workshop or a garage or at least outside. A couple things can help you out with minimizing the mess. Uh, I like to use cardboard because you're, you're gonna have oil, it's gonna leak all over the place, uh, no matter what, there's just really no way of avoiding it. I also like to put uh, the pump inside of a tub like this, or you could use a garbage can if you wanted to. And the first thing we wanna do here is just unscrew this demister. So now that's done, we need to find the bolts that are holding this reservoir onto the rest of the housing where the motor and everything else is at. Uh, this newer generation of Premier Pump, it only has four bolts. It has one at each corner here. They are a hex head four millimeter. And what you wanna do is just loosen each of them up. Just, just loosen them. Don't completely take them out. We're just looking to break the, uh, the initial seal in between both of these. And actually the best way to do this is if you prop this up on its back, but what that's gonna do is make the rest of the oil drain back down into here, so uh, trying to minimize as much mess as possible. And then once all of those are loosened up, we're just gonna take our mallet and just kinda gently tap around the edges. Uh, hopefully that will loosen up that seal. You don't wanna whack this thing, you don't wanna use a regular hammer. This is just aluminum, like a cast aluminum case, and they can break. So once that's done, we can loosen up the rest of them all the way. 
And when you take these off, make sure that you're keeping both washers. There's a lock washer and a flat washer. Set those aside. And now that all the screws are off there, we're ready to separate this oil casing from the motor housing. Uh, this one's probably gonna pop off really easy because it's never been used before. You can use your mallet again and just kind of tap lightly while this moves around. But you're definitely not gonna, don't use something to pry it off. This is soft metal. And once you break that seal, then we can reveal what's inside. So you can see the inside of this one is extremely clean because it's new, of course. It's never even been run through one cycle. But a lot of times this will be very full of junk if your oil is super dirty. Uh, this is where the clogs can happen. In older pumps, a lot of these internals were not, uh, they were not non-ferrous metals. So they were made of steel instead of aluminum or stainless steel or whatever. And they would start to rust and it would look really, really nasty. If you're curious about that, I have a video on the old JB pump of doing this. And and uh, you'll be shocked at what it looks like inside of one of these. So most likely on yours, this part right here is, uh, is steel. You can see a magnet sticks to it, but uh, the casing, it does not stick to, and this housing right here, it does not stick to. These are our aluminum, this is steel. So if something's gonna corrode, it's gonna be this part right here. Uh, if you get some water or some really nasty stuff in your oil, it will start to rust in here. And uh, if, if that's the case, that's probably the reason you're watching this video. So now that our cover is off, you're going to want to inspect all of these parts around here and see if there is debris holding things up. If there is, this is where your brake cleaner, your carb cleaner comes into play, as well as a soft bristled brush because it can get in all of these little nooks and crannies and things. And this is the part where I really like to have the pump sitting in a tub or something like that when you're really trying to scrub this gunk off because it will keep all of that gunk in one place no matter uh, where you're at. You definitely wanna be outside uh, when you do this. Hopefully you do not have to take apart the pump itself. Uh, it's relatively contained, so it shouldn't suck up a lot of junk. But in the case that just cleaning this out does not fix your problem, uh, depending on what your problem is, you, this is the next step. You're gonna have to start pulling this pump apart to, uh, to get it working again. So a couple of other things while we have this cover off, you'll notice that there is a rubber seal that goes all the way around this. You wanna make sure that you don't take this out. And if it does fall out, make sure that you put it back in. And either way, even if it stays in, you're gonna to wanna to coat this with oil before putting this cover back on. The other thing is this sight glass in here. And if this thing has some crud running through it, uh, a lot of people just, they don't know how to get to this. They don't know how to clean it out. There's not really an awesome way <laughs> other than if you take a Q-tip like this, you can get inside of those little holes and kind of wipe it out. You can also try putting some alcohol, like rubbing alcohol in there. You can try using some of this brake cleaner that we're using to clean uh, the rest of the pump. I don't believe that little guard with the holes in it will come off. It doesn't come off easily at least. And I'm just not willing to risk uh, it not going back on. So I tried to kind of mess with it and try to get, to get it off. It did not come off easily. Also make sure that this seal does not get broken or damaged during this process or you will be down uh, until you get a new one from Harvest Right or your pump manufacturer because any little break or uh, imperfection in one of these seals is gonna put oil under your pump and it's gonna cause it to leak. And now we're ready to put this back together. I like to take a little bit of oil and just put some on my finger and I like to just put it all the way around this seal and then I do that same thing with where that seal is going to sit on here as well. Uh, this pump is designed much, much better than the old pumps used to be. Uh, the old pumps were very difficult to line up. This one's pretty much a no-brainer, really. And this seal is also uh, uniform on all sides, so it, it looks the same on all sides. The old ones were, were not like that. So this one lines up extremely easy. There's really not um, a way to mess it up. As long as you have the drain on the bottom like it's supposed to be, uh, once that is lined up, you can get just hand tighten all of your bolts again. Don't tighten them down yet. Once you have all of those hand tight, you're just gonna start on one corner, do about one turn of the Allen wrench until it starts to snug up, and then go to the complete opposite corner 
do the same thing and you're gonna do that all the way around and then you're gonna go back one more time once all of these are just torqued a little bit and torque them down the final way. They don't need to be super duper tight. This is not a super high pressure oil scenario. So, uh, you know, just, just a good amount of pressure on there is gonna do you just fine. Now that our housing is back on and we can actually fill it back up with oil again, I like to use just a little funnel like this. It can, kinda keeps the mess to a minimal uh, while you're filling it back up. And then once you're full, I like to go halfway up this sight glass. You can put your uh, demister on now. I like to actually go backwards a couple times and it usually uh, seats those threads and lines up those threads a little bit better. And then you can screw that the rest of the way back on. And now that we're put back together, I would highly recommend hooking this back up to your freeze dryer. Uh, go into the function screen by holding down the leaf button on the, uh, the home screen, and then you can get to, uh, you can manually turn the vacuum pump on. I would run it until it goes back down to probably below 500 millitors. Uh, at that point, you can check for leaks. I really hope this helped you out today. Uh, I've also been working on a book for almost five years now that will be called the freeze drying handbook. It's gonna have all this kind of stuff in it. It's really just uh, my entire brain of freeze drying, uh, everything that I know up to this point. I've been freeze drying since 2017, thousands of cycles now, so uh, I pretty much everything I know has been put into this book. That will be out shortly, if not already, depending on when you're watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, let us know by clicking that like button and suggesting it to your fellow freeze drying friends. In the meantime, this is Retired at 40, remember to live life simple. Catch you next week.